Hi. Uh, at the end of my last video, I had a concept ready to go that I had created, which you can see here with some additions. So in this episode, I'm just going to quickly run through what I've done since then. And then I will probably begin to make the base piece for the diorama, the grass. Um, just gives me something to start from. Um, and we'll go from there. So what you see here is I, I've taken the concept and I've just extended the canvas and I've run through exactly what I expect will be in the scene at the end. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, but it just gives me something to work with um, and I can kind of schedule off of that. Um, so the list here is a lot smaller than it is for other projects that I've had because this project is supposed to be something smaller for me to do. So I took my Pinterest board uh, and was looking at the flowers and things like that on there. Um, so I was, I, I've added a few things to my board since I last recorded, but uh, I was looking at poppies, peonies, and uh, dandelions as well. There's some other flowers on here which I might use, but for now, three will do. And I'll add more if I feel the need. Uh, I found some reference for feathers because I'll need to do the bird, obviously. Um, and a reference for my vase. Uh, this is how I want to sort of do the material on it. It's sort of an embossed ceramic kind of thing. It's got some nice colour variation on it. Um, so that's what I have so far. And I can just manage what I'm doing a bit more. Oh yeah, I added some white daisies in. We'll see how that goes. But it's always nice to have like white contrasting the bright colours. Um, and some grass and moss from the gravestone. So in terms of concepting, what I've done is I did this sort of design for the vase. Um, not exact, but I can I plan out the colours a little bit. Um, the motifs that are going on there. I want to kind of have some repeating elements, uh, otherwise it will look a little bit too noisy. So I've got these leaves and these vines going up the whole design. There's more leaves down here. Uh, so I guess the repeating motif is the leaves and then different coloured flowers also repeating down the vase. Um, and I like how the white areas are contrasting the coloured areas. And I've put these stripes across just because they sort of broke up the design of the vase a little bit. Uh, it might not work in the end, but I kind of like it. Uh, even though when I had it initially in my concept, it was just sort of something that was done out of laziness. I've actually kind of stuck with it and I kind of like it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, you can see where the colours are going. Uh, so when I make the final vase, what I will probably do is sculpt it in ZBrush. Um, or use sort of some hard surface modelling in Max and then bash it up in ZBrush. At this point, basically, I just begin to move into the 3D process. Anything that I need to test, I will make tests for, or I will just move straight into creating the final piece. And if something isn't working, I'll just reevaluate as I go and start again if I need to. I guess sort of testing as I go, like testing on the fly rather than making specific tests that I spend time on. So that's what I'll do next with the base of the diorama. So I'm going to open Photoshop, 3ds Max and Unreal Engine and just make a start. Well, I've just spent half an hour recording and it turned out my microphone was off. And now my throat is sore. And I'm sad. But I'm going to record it again. So here we go. Man, I'm sad. Following you on from what I did in my last video, um, you can see here that I'm just um, really quickly blocking out some colours for a texture that I'll, I'm just going to throw into Unreal Engine. It's good to work from, from big to small. You've probably heard this before. So I'm, I'm really just quickly throwing in um, materials and textures um, so I can just see what works and what doesn't with the lighting I'm creating. 
super fast unwraps, um, really quick simple materials just so I can see the bigger picture. So I'm sort of moving around objects in the scene, just trying to work out a bit more of composition. I know I already did a lot of this um, for my concept, but um, if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. So I decided to uh, go again um, and just edit some bits. I can already see that the detail level on the vase is a bit small maybe for the scene next to the magpie it might actually be okay in the end but definitely I want to avoid creating unnecessary noise um, and once I get other items into the scene it either may work or not work so we'll see what happens with that but it's something that I'm bearing in mind you can see that when I'm putting materials in I'm using a power node connected to a 1.2 constant um, and that just boosts the uh, power of the texture and keeps it nice and saturated and, and stops it becoming washed out by the light in the scene. You can see here that I'm falling foul of um, stupidly moving stuff around in Unreal Engine. So uh, stuff is coming out at really weird scales as I export back and forth between Unreal Engine and 3ds Max. Um, when I come actually to modelling properly, I always make sure that everything is at just a scale of one to one. I tend to set everything in my Mac scene to have the same pivot so I can edit everything in Max exactly how I want it and then just import it into Unreal and it'll match my Max scene uh, exactly and I can just put everything to the same rotation and uh, pivot point so this makes it easier for me to swap in textures later as well uh, I've given everything its own material um, and I can just really quickly put textures in or whatever I want and everything's just ready to go So um, I went away from my diorama for a little while, a couple of weeks, um, and sort of slept on the design I'd come up with so far, uh, and I wasn't 100% happy with the idea for the base, with just grass. Um, so I decided that it would be good to have some like broken pieces of brick on the floor, sort of under the grass, to break up the green, have some areas of white. So here you can see that I'm just creating a block out for a sculpt because I just want to get straight on with sculpting. So I'm splitting up a basic rectangle into a very regular segments. Uh, I'm applying a Turbo Smooth modifier by um, Smoothing Group and adding a couple of iterations of that and then adding a second Turbo Smooth modifier on top just to smooth those edges and give them a curve um, and it just gives me a nice consistent mesh for when I take it into the, uh, ZBrush to sculpt over. You want to have the uh, mesh density be as consistent as possible across the model. So I'm just moving around the pieces of uh, brick to where they might work. Uh, once I take them into Unreal Engine, it might be that they don't work out and I can move them around. They, they were fine in the end. I like to make my bases for sculpting in 3ds Max, um, mostly because I just sort of avoid doing as much as possible in, uh, in ZBrush. It mostly stems from me hating the gizmo in ZBrush, which is actually a lot better now, so I feel a bit more comfortable with moving stuff around, uh, but I'll still do most of it. 3ds Max, just for the sake of comfort, and um, I'm a bit better at modeling, and at a base level anyway, in 3ds Max. What you can see me doing here is um, making the basic model for my um, for the round piece of uh, like rock platform. Um, so I'm just making a series of like rock slabs and laying them all out in a row um, and I'm going to use the bend modifier as you'll see here to create the round shape. I've overlapped the slabs of rock so that they're actually clipping into each other a little bit and that means that I don't have any gaps in my sculpt. Um, when I take it into ZBrush, I don't have to worry about trying to fill up the gaps between the rocks because they're already full. 
and I can actually work on creating the negative space between the rocks, sculpting in with like trim smooth border and creating some interesting edges um, and not having to worry about the fact that there's like gaping holes between each of the rock pieces which won't bake very nicely. It's quite a quick and dirty method but uh, it does the job and as long as you've got a consistent mesh to sculpt over at the end of the day I'm just gonna decimate this um, and bake it down so I don't need it to be clean at all. I like to use FFD modifiers to um, edit the shapes of things and so you can see that I quickly reset X form and then uh, use the FFD modifiers just to drag bits around to the shape that I want. Uh, it's a method that I use a lot for base meshes before sculpting. Uh, so I don't, I don't tend to use uh, that many scripts when I work, mostly through laziness. But uh, this is a nice little script that I found a few years ago when I was making previous projects. It's the Fracture Voronoi script. Um, it's really nice for breaking up pieces of geometry and it breaks it up in quite a nice natural way so that I get nice irregular pieces to work with. Uh, I'd used it for a previous project alongside the Debris Maker um, script. If I remember correctly, I used the Fracture Voronoi script to um, split the mesh into pieces. Um, and then use gravity and drop the pieces um, so it was for like a tiled floor and um, so I could use that to create broken pieces for the edge of the tiled floor and then sculpt them just to give them a bit more sort of wear and tear natural kind of look so you can see here this is the kind of uh, thing you get you can select the number of parts that it breaks into and it just splits the mesh um, into irregular shaped pieces however you can see that when you put the um, wireframe on that the subdivisions of the model don't extend to the broken faces so I decided actually that I should redo it uh, with a um, just standard box six-sided box and then turbo smooth that so that I've got consistent ish iterations across the whole thing so you can see me going again here uh, so this time it is just like really primitive shapes and I can just drag those around um, in as natural a way as possible as if bits of rock have broken away and just repeat that as often as I want. Every time you do it you get like a different configuration of broken pieces. Uh, so I just drag those around and delete any pieces I don't want and then I can just select them all um, and use the same method as I had before. So turbo smooth by uh, smoothing group a couple of times and then add a, another turbo smooth modifier over the top and uh, turbo smooth again so I get those softer edges. As you can see the um, mesh isn't super consistent and it's a little bit awkward to sculpt because uh, especially on the acute angles and the sharp edges it will collapse a little bit on itself when you try and sculpt it um, you can sort of get around it, you just have to be a bit more careful um, but for the sake of someone lazy like me trying to get something done quick it definitely does the job and I'm really happy with how it works out. Again with the FFD modifiers, just um, adding sort of a sloped edge to my, um, my rock piece um, and it, so it'll just sort of um, sculpt a bit nicer and it'll be a bit nicer to look at. You won't have like sharp shadows where it's a 90 degree uh, angle. So sculpting, uh, you can see here that I've just jumped straight into ZBrush um, and I, it appears as if I'm just working straight in ZBrush but I've done a few bits and bobs to set up. I have a lot of sub tools going on and that's because uh, what I've done is I've brought my mesh in as an OBJ, just imported it and I've split it into poly groups and in turn split it into sub tools. So to split it into poly groups I just go to uh, poly groups and then auto groups and then I can go to um, sub tool and groups split and that just splits every single piece into its own sub tool 
uh, it's I guess a little bit of a messy way to work but it means I can individually hide each piece as I am doing now and sculpt it and I can get right in the cracks between the pieces of rock uh, and just not have to worry about accidentally catching other pieces of the mesh as I try and sculpt. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm bashing up the edges with the clay brush. Um, I use the clay cho chews brush as well a little bit but clay uh, gives me quite a nice like soft edge to work with. Um, and then I use a uh, trim smooth border to just harden up the edges of it and make it a bit cleaner. Uh, the cracks are done with slash three and then I go in with trim smooth border to give the edges a more stylized clean look. Um, I use the trim smooth border in its standard state but I also use um, it in its inverse state um, so I don't know if it's control or shift that I'm using um, so it, as well as pushing into the uh, sculpt you can also pull up from the sculpt um, and create a really nice flat surface it's quite nice for um, sort of correcting areas where you might have gone in a bit hard and it's gone quite sort of blobby looking um, and you can use that inverse state to just really flatten it out um, so I found that quite recently and it's a really nice way of just creating a really nice clean sculpt as quickly as possible they're pretty much the only brushes I use to be honest I don't really tend to download brushes or do anything crazy uh, I also use the new nice easy gizmo to just uh, rotate bits around and uh, lift pieces up or push pieces down um, so you get like a nice irregular face to the, uh, the surface uh, and it'll catch light nicely again I'm just sort of working from big to small um, really I do the bigger cracks and then later on in the sculpt I'll, I'll come back in with a smaller brush and do the smaller, smaller cracks the main thing I guess to remember when doing uh, sculpts for hand painting over is just keep them as clean as possible I used to add loads of sort of noise and wear and tear into my sculpts but it just it will clash a bit with any hand painting you do so you want to keep the sculpts really clean uh, your cracks really clean no like weird noise or anything uh, and it just gives you a nice base to work with when you're hand painting so this goes on for a while um, I'm just gonna let it run so you can watch it if you want or if not I will put in a link for you to skip ahead uh, and see what I do next with blocking out some grass really quickly for my Unreal Engine team
the next bit I needed to do was um, to create a grass block out. Um, I was basically disregarding everything that I'd made in my um, Unreal Engine scene so far. I wanted grass that perfectly matched what I had uh, with my stone piece that I've made in Zebra so far. Um, so that meant um, just creating a really quick block out, um, not even like a sculpt that I could just do really quickly in Zebrish that would match what I've done so far. Um, so I could make it uh, sort of overflow over the bricks or go under them or come up through the uh, cracks in the stone uh, however I wanted without having to sort of go back and forth between Unreal Engine or 3ds Max uh, to try and make it work. Um, so I thought I'd just do this really quickly. Um, and what it also does is fills in the holes between my uh, brick pieces where I might have accidentally just sort of cut into it a little bit too far and, and you would see all the way through the uh, high poly. So I would just really quickly with the clay brush make these sort of blobby shapes uh, and then use the masking tool just to uh, get rid of uh, any sort of bits that I don't want there. So I have like a general shape for the edge of the grass. Uh, and then I also mask the area that is hidden underneath the uh, the stone, so this sort of semicircle kind of shape. Um, and I split them into their own subtools. I attach the subtool underneath the uh, rock to the uh, to the rock itself, and the other bit, this sort of half moon shape, I can uh, just use as my my grass that I can take into Unreal Engine. Uh, through habit I just like retopping in 3D coat um, so here you can just see I'm really quickly doing a, a retop it took me like an hour um, the only things I really had to bear in mind for this was just making the silhouette match a little bit uh, between the rocks um, it doesn't need to be any particularly fancy topology because it's not like it's going to move uh, it's just a rigid model so um, this is just super quick to do um, and uh, yeah, just really quick, and then I can um, unwrap that in uh, 3ds Max. I always say to avoid using too many programs, but uh, I go against my own advice here because I've I'm, uh, god knows how many programs I've used at this point. Uh, but I like baking in Substance Painter because it's quite nice and quick. Uh, and it gives you uh, sort of a good uh, preview of what you've created as well. Uh, so you can see here I've done my baking. Um, all I want from this is a normal map, uh, an ambient occlusion map, and a curvature map. Um, and you can see how the light is catching quite nicely where I've rotated the pieces of rock uh, and lifted and lowered bits uh, in ZBrush. Uh, I'm literally just using the default baking options. I don't think I even changed the size of the uh, sort of cage it generates. Um, and then in order to get the occlusion and curvature map out, I just um, create a fill layer and then uh, fill that with my textures that I've generated. I didn't even bother exploding the pieces out because any occlusion that it generates, it's, it's not like I'm going to be moving the pieces around once they're in engine. So I was quite happy for them to self shadow. Um, so you can see my curvature map acts really nicely to give me an idea in my, um, at least when it comes to hand painting, exactly where the cracks are and where the areas that are going to be catching light are. So though I won't necessarily be using it in my final texture, it gives me just something really nice and easy to work with um, to see exactly what I'm doing when it comes to hand painting. This is my Photoshop texture for the stone platform. As you can see it's quite simple, there's not much contrast going on. Um, I tend to like winning contrast in textures um, but this is just a really quick rock out based texture that I've made from the maps that, I, that I've generated from Substance Painter. So I'll just talk through it really quickly. If I go down to the base there's, there's nothing there, it's just a flat colour that I've chosen and I've taken my ambient occlusion, set it to multiply and set it to a very low opacity. That just gives me some shadows and the cracks to work with. Uh, I've also got my curvature, but actually I didn't use it in the end. 
I've set that to a low opacity as well as an overlay so you get the lighter and the darker sections of the uh, of the curvature map but I don't like how if you look at it up close it's quite grainy uh, and dirty but I can work with that just to work out where the highlights are when it comes to hand painting so I've turned that off for this what I also have here is the green channel from my normal map and I've inverted it so if I go to my normal map and go to channels and select the green channel and just control A and control C on that go back to my layers and create a new layer and control B Oops. so this is my green channel and then you can invert that if you need to or don't if you don't want to but for this instance I invert it so I'm just going to delete that and I've just turned that to soft light and the opacity down to 58% and it just adds some lighting information to my block out texture now if you look at my normal map you'll see that there's some pretty harsh gradients on some of these rocks and that's because I've set the rocks to one single smoothing group when I've baked them and I haven't split the UVs along the hard edges. Usually if you have a hard edge in a model you'll split the UVs so if I get a brush split the UV here, here, here and here and just leave a gap. Uh, same for here, here uh, especially on these rocks because they're very they've got some very harsh angles which is why you're getting such crazy gradients on them so I'd split the UVs like so uh, the reason I haven't is because I'm lazy and because it it looks okay in Unreal Engine in some engines you will actually see that you, you're getting these weird gradients and it'll create sort of a bubble effect in your uh, material it looks okay in Unreal Engine if it didn't I would split the UVs uh, it's good practice to split them um, and for each area where you've split the UVs you'd have a different smoothing group but yes I am lazy and it looks okay uh, if I was doing this properly for work or whatever I would split the UVs so split your UVs friends so finally I can move my pieces uh, into Unreal Engine 4 um, at this point what I do is um, I just move between Unreal Engine 4 and 3ds Max uh, I have everything at the same pivot um, and all positioned relative to each other in my 3ds Max scene um, so I can just um, move bricks around if they're not peeking through the grass how I want them to I can lift the bricks or push the bricks down um, I can lift this or push down the stone platform if I want it to be closer to the grass um, and just get it exactly how I want in Unreal Engine. So I'll be going in with like, blades of grass and maybe paint grass and uh, blades into the texture as well. Um, so I want to be able to do it relative to where the um, where the bricks are, so that they sort of interact naturally, and it doesn't look like I've just plonked a brick in there or some stone in the middle of the grass. I want them to look naturally like they're supposed to be next to each other. I could actually take this uh, this grass mesh that I've made. Uh, and in 3ds max bake like a really quick um, ambient occlusion mat uh, just within 3ds max to get shadows that show me exactly where the bricks are intersecting with the grass uh, and then i can work with that really easily to just like paint grass like that goes around the bricks or comes up onto the bricks um so it's just quite a nice way of working at least for me maybe maybe it's like some stupid convoluted way so you can see here that this is my uh, bake the texture that I made really quickly in Photoshop as a base and my grass block out. I'm quite happy with how this has turned out so far. Um, I'm sure it'll look better once I've got some hand painting on it as well. But as I've said several times now, um, working like from the bigger picture to the smaller picture is a really good way to work. So at this point with the rock, I'm going to leave it for now. Um, I've got the hard bit done, so now I can just go in and paint it. Uh, but what I'm going to do so I can work them up together is put in some grass um, so I'm going to have a go at that texture I'm quite excited looking at this screenshot uh, uh, about the colours of like the white of the rock and like the blue where the shadow is contrasting with that really saturated green 
um, and how the green goes when the shadow falls on it as well. So I'm hoping to play with that a little bit. Uh, and we'll get some grass blades in as well. Um, and we'll, we'll just see how it goes, but I'm not going to work anymore on the rock. Not until later anyway, and we'll work everything up together quite consistently. So in my next video, I will make some grass and we will see where we go from there. I'm excited to see where the grass will go. I like making grass, but um, yeah, so I hope this video has been informative and interesting. Uh, I'm sorry about like the weird echoey thing going on. Something has gone weird with my microphone and I will endeavour to fix it for my next video. But yes, uh, thank you for watching. See you when I post my next video, probably sometime in the distant future.